Earlier this year, we took a look at the 2018 Ford F-150 XLT. It's a facelift for Ford's current generation F-Series truck. And while the XLT represents probably what most people are going to be buying here in Canada and North America, it certainly doesn't represent what people are really searching for on YouTube. Our spotlight is on this 2019 Ford F-150 Platinum. Now, it isn't the top trim. The Limited is positioned above it. And you can find out more about the Limited F-150 by watching our GMC Sierra Denali video. We actually did a small comparison at the end of that video. But today, we're going to be showing you everything about this truck, all the options and bells and whistles that have been equipped on this pretty much fully loaded vehicle, and tell you everything you need to know if you're in the market for Ford's 2019 F-Series pickup truck. So what is new for the F-150 for 2019? Well, there's not much. At the limited trim, you do get the high output 3.5 liter EcoBoost engine that we tested in the Lincoln Navigator. That really is about it. There isn't any other changes. And you might think that that could be an issue since the Ram 1500, GMC Sierra, and Chevy Silverado are all new for 2019, whereas this isn't. But that's a problem with development cycles. Ford had their big refresh with the F-150 a few years ago. So now it's time for GM and Chrysler to catch up a little bit. So it isn't a new model, it hasn't really been updated too much, but it's still got a lot going for it, especially at this platinum trim. Up front, you have LED headlights, fog lights, and high beams with automatic high beams. They work really, really well. In fact, it's some of the best LED headlights we've used on a vehicle to date. You also have a 360 degree camera system with a nozzle on the front to be able to wash the front camera off. You have a block heater up front, and there are no parking sensors on the front of the vehicle, which I actually do find kind of strange. There are some on the side, and on the back of the vehicle. But before we continue walking around the car, I just wanna talk about what's underneath the hood here, because so far we've only featured gas versions of the F-150. This one's a little bit different. Oh yeah, that's the sound of a diesel. And if you didn't know that, you might be watching the wrong video here. This uses Ford's three liter V6 turbo diesel power stroke engine. Now is it the most powerful? Certainly not, but it depends on what you mean by powerful. 250 horsepower is actually the least amount of horsepower in an F-150 vehicle this generation. But it has 440 pound-feet of torque, which is really good for an engine of this size. Now, since it is a diesel, you might be getting better fuel economy, especially if you're using it on the highway. So we're going to be doing some extensive testing this week with the diesel engine to see how far we can go, A, on a single tank of diesel, and how efficient we can make it. Now, let's go take a look around the rest of the vehicle with the sides first. Now I say we're gonna go around the side of the vehicle, which is something we don't usually do. I'll walk around really quickly, but there are some features here to note. There's a parking sensor along the front side here. Now there aren't any on the front of this truck. There are some on the back, but we do have one on the side here, and that helps with the park assist feature. You also have power folding mirrors, and these have chrome plates on them for the platinum trim. You have keyless access to the doors through the front here. You can lock and unlock from the front handles. You also have automatic running boards, which we kind of expect on a trim at this price point. But because this is fully loaded, you do get a couple extra goodies. You have a side step here. Give it a little kick on the button, comes out, get up. If you have some stuff back here you need to get into, you have to tie something down, you're good to go. It actually really works out well if you're gonna be using this as a truck. And then moving along, you have chrome door handles, a power opening rear window, 20 inch rims, and then the spray and bed liner here. But the trunk is also a little interesting too. Let me show you. Now along back here, you do have the Platinum badge instead of the big F-150. I actually kind of like it. It's the same thing as the Limited. They'll have the same thing, but it'll say Limited back here. So people do know that you are driving more or less the best one. The only thing with the back here is the license plate lights are not LED. What can you do? We do have a small light here, just where the handle is to be able to see if you're doing some work back here. And it's not very bright and you do have your rear camera. But let me tell you what I'm talking about with the trunk here, because it has a feature that I certainly as an absolute unit as myself need. This part slides out. And what do you know? You have two little pieces here that come up. And this is designed for you to be able to get up onto the truck if you're like me. Again, an absolute unit. It's a little harder for you to get up. You just step up, use the little handle, and you're good to go. Now you're in the back of the truck. You can walk around. And it makes life so much easier. So this handle works out pretty well. You've got your little step. You just come down. And I mean, I'm pretty big, right? 
you guys tell me all the time in the comments. It supports my weight pretty well. You just follow the instructions to put it back down, clip, clip, bad boy slides back in, and then that slides in like that. Everything is built into the trunk here. It's awesome. So there's multiple ways for you to get in to the back of your F-150. If it's those side steps, just using the bumper here if you want to, or the little system they've got here. Now let's jump inside and see what features are on the inside of this pickup truck. Now, some of you have commented before that I sit in an awkward position and I probably look that way now, but it's just because the car has easy exit. I do like that feature, especially with a truck of this size, you do have a lot of room. So it's really convenient for me to be able to push the seat back and not that I need the space, but it's nice to have it. Now the interior layout here isn't any different than what we've seen on all the other F-150s that we've done. But some of the features are, first of all, you have a much more in-depth computer screen where the cluster is. You can see a lot more information than just basic speed and tachometer. It's actually got a lot more. You've got your analog speed and tach on either side, but that digital computer shows you your oil pressure, your coolant level, your gas, and you can change it between turbo or your transmission temperature or the DEF level in your vehicle. So there's actually quite a bit that you can configure on here. I like to keep the digital speedometer on, but I also have access to things like your fuel history, fuel economy, trip, navigation, auto start stop status, trailer information, off-road information, and then you have all of the pre-collision and safety tech that you can configure through there as well. So there's a lot of stuff going on with just that computer. You still have the same Ford Sync system in the center here. We use Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, and that would be our only complaint that we talked about before, where you are stuck using Apple CarPlay or Android Auto Maps if you plug your device in. We talked about that with the F-150, We've talked about it with a number of other vehicles from Ford. It would be nice if you could have your phone plugged in and still use the navigation that's built in because it's actually pretty good. A couple other different features over the XLT. You have front heated seats, a heated steering wheel, front ventilated seats, and front massaging seats. The same kind of massage that we had on the Lincoln Navigator. It's not bad. You also have Bang & Olufsen's b and Play audio system here. To be honest, it doesn't sound any different than something like Bose, but it is important to know that it is a luxury-oriented system in here. You have a leather-wrapped dashboard, and everything is pretty soft to the touch. Center console here is nice. You've got this dark wood trim throughout, and the black yeah, works with this dark burgundy color of the vehicle. You also have the panoramic dual-panel sunroof up top, and that's about it. I mean, there isn't much different, but just small little changes to make this experience a lot nicer than it was with the XLT. I'm starting to understand why people want this as a luxury vehicle instead of just a raw truck. But let's jump in the back real quick just to talk about a few features there, and then we'll take it on our road test. So while there might not be a lot of features back here, really there's no features back here, space is outstanding. You can see here I'm seated really in the only position you can get in the back seats. But if I was sitting in the driver's seat right now, I have almost like a half foot of space here. I can easily put my feet out if I want to relax. I can. It's really spacious. Comfort isn't too bad too. You do have an armrest here, it's like a good angle. You can pull out little cup holders there. They seem to be a little cheap, but aside from that, there's not much else. You do have vents in the back here. There is no third zone climate control though, so it's basically just what comes out from the front. You do have outboard heated seats with two settings. You have two USB chargers, a regular cigarette outlet, and a power inverter, 400 watt max with a 110 volt power source. So it's not bad. If you're using this as a family hauling SUV, then your kids are probably going to be comfortable back here, especially with these seat belt inflators on the outboard side. They use a slightly different apparatus here because in the event of a collision, they will expand to help protect whoever seated in the outboard seats. So the mechanisms are quite big, and it is important to note if you are using a small car seat or something like that, they will get stuck in the door. They do get kind of get stuck because you're not just pulling the belt from one side, it's actually coming from two sides. There's a retractable part from the bottom and the top. So make sure every time your kids get in and out of the car that that seatbelt is not stuck in the door because if you keep slamming it, slamming it, slamming it, it's not going to be very good. But the seatbelt inflators are there and they are standard so that there is a little bit more safety going on in the back here. But enough about me talking back here. Let's get on the road, take this diesel for a spin, and talk about everything else we found on our week with the 2019 F-150 Platinum. The first thing I want to talk about really quickly here with the F-150, it's something that we didn't talk about, I don't think, with the XLT that we did, was the remote starter. We did talk about the remote starter, but just not about how smart it actually is, because it's 8 degrees, which uh, is probably about the same temperature it was when we filmed 
the other one in the springtime, just end of winter. But when I remote started it, heated steering wheel comes on, heated front seats come on, and I'm happy about it because it is a little chilly, so it is nice to have those. But let's talk about this F-150 Platinum. There's really two major differences with this vehicle, two huge differences. The interior comfort, because we've got leather seats, and the three liter Power Stroke V6 turbo diesel. Now, last time when we featured the 2.7 twin turbo V6, we got 12.7 liters per 100 kilometers, which is actually pretty good for a truck this size. I will admit that we probably did more highway mileage than we normally would have on test drive. But now that we've had a chance to drive this vehicle for quite a while now, we've done 700 kilometers nearly since filming this. We're about halfway through our week with it, so I still have quite a bit of time. We've averaged, and this is including highway and more city stuff, 10.4 liters per 100 kilometers. It's pretty good, right, for a pickup truck, especially doing less highway stuff. It's not bad. And that's one of the main reasons I think people are going to be looking at the diesel option is if they do want to have a little bit more fuel economy. But it is important to note, with the 3 liter Power Stroke diesel, First of all, you can't get it on the limited trim. That makes sense because they're now offering the Lincoln Navigators engine on that. So it makes sense. Ford Raptor. But it's also not very quick. 250 horsepower isn't very fast. And if we go, not from a blistering speed here, but, you know, moderate acceleration, it gets up to speed. But it might feel a little slower if you're used to a gas-powered vehicle, especially if you get the regular 3.5 liter EcoBoost with the 375 horsepower on it, it's pretty nice. But I haven't had any issues with it. I find that the speed is good. I get onto the highways with no problem. I usually do keep the vehicle in eco mode. That was one of the complaints that we had about the vehicle last time when we were filming this is the button to actually change the mode from hauling mode, highway mode, sport mode, eco mode. It doesn't stay in eco mode every time you turn the truck off. That was one of our dislikes. Because realistically, this is a solid truck. There's not much to dislike about it. So I guess I'd have to say the same thing now. Same thing with the navigation override. When you plug in your phone, Android Auto or Apple CarPlay will override the maps that are built in with Ford Sync, which is too bad because they're pretty nice. And that's it. The only other one complaint we had about this vehicle when we featured the XLT were the halogen headlight performance. And that's not an issue with these LEDs. They are really good. And we're not going to be going over the likes and dislikes with this truck because it is sort of a hybrid between a snapshot and a spotlight since we've already talked about the truck we're just talking about the differences here but i have to say comfort on the road really nice with these leather seats i'm sure they'd be a little bit nicer if you had the limited trim with the upscale leather but for the most part this is really comfortable i'm in a good seated position the truck is comfortable handles well i'm much happier with this than i was with the two xlts we've driven and the important thing, the thing that we really can't talk about too much on this episode because we don't have the vehicles parked side by side, but in comparison to the 2018 GMC Sierra Denali, this is nicer and this isn't even the limited. So if I had to choose between the Denali or this, very easy answer, I'm taking this. And then if I had the budget to get the Platinum, I certainly would. Now to be fair though, the 2019 GMC Sierra Denali is already starting to roll out now, right? Reviewers have had a chance to get behind the wheel of it. GM did a big press event for it, so people have seen it. We know all about it. You know, there's a few little features that we complained about during our review of the 2018 that have been added to that vehicle, so it does help. And again, doing a full update mid-cycle for Ford, I don't think it's necessarily going to hurt their sales, but it's important to note that Ford did their major update a few years ago, like we mentioned in our walk around, whereas GM and Chrysler are doing theirs this year. So they get some new fun stuff. But overall, it's a great vehicle. If you're looking for a truck, and I know I've talked about this before, you know, if you're looking for a luxury truck, now I kind of understand why. Now, before filming this segment here, I watched the 2017 Ford F-150 video I did just over two years ago. One of the complaints I had about that, even with the 3.5 liter EcoBoost engine, was the ability to turn off the auto start stop. It did not have an override for it, at least I couldn't figure it out. I believe the XLT we did in 2018 had it, and then this one has it as well. So you can override it, which is nice. And we've talked about it before on some other vehicles, specifically with GM cars, that the auto start stop is a little too sensitive. As soon as you stop, it'll turn off. I found with this is outstanding come to a stop it gives you almost two full seconds before it'll turn off so you have a lot of time to be able to go 
you come to a stop sign, you don't necessarily want to turn off because you want to stop fully and then continue on if it's your turn to go. And I find that this system works really, really well. So I keep it on all the time because as a diesel driver, I want the most amount of range and the smallest fuel consumption. So I want to have the auto start stop on. So this vehicle does have a sport mode. I don't really use it because I find that the regular power mode is good enough to be able to get you up to speed. But we are in four wheel automatic mode. We are in sport mode. And if I floor it, it picks up. It's not, it's not super quick, right? If you're expecting a sports car, you've come to the wrong video. But you know what? It isn't bad for a really small diesel. And I say really small in comparison to Ford's other power stroke turbo diesel engine right i mean three liter is pretty small but i gotta say it picks up pretty quickly especially if you're maybe hauling something you know maybe not loaded it up to the maximum that this vehicle can carry but if you are carrying a little bit more than you normally would and you need to have just a little bit more power i think sport mode works Again, we won't be doing a likes and dislikes segment for this episode only because we featured the 2018 F-150 XLT earlier this year, and those haven't changed for us with this 2019 model. I do want to talk briefly about our final fuel economy numbers with Ford's 3.0-liter Powerstroke V6 turbo diesel engine. We drove 1,250 kilometers this week and averaged 10.4 liters per 100 kilometers total. Compared to the XLT's 2.7 liter twin turbo V6 we drove, which averaged 12.7 liters per 100 kilometers. We also wanted to see what our 103 kilometer drive back to Montreal got us, which averaged 9 liters per 100 kilometers. Again, fantastic numbers for a light duty pickup truck. Diesel is the way that we'd go if we were buying this. Thanks for watching this episode of Test Drive Spotlight on the 2019 Ford F-150 Platinum. What do you think about the Power Stroke diesel engine? Can it compete with Ram's Eco Diesel or GM's upcoming 3 liter Duramax diesel engine? Only time will tell. For now, we'd easily take this F-150 Platinum over the 2018 GMC Sierra Denali that we featured earlier. However, we do have the new 2019 Ram 1500 Limited booked in November and plan on getting the 2019 GMC Sierra Denali, which we had a chance to preview during our week with this Ford. Until next time, take care.